Hello, good evening. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets from an intermarket analysis perspective. As always, this is a video for Tuesday uh, European market close on the 5th of April 2016, ideally for Wednesday's trading, which is the 6th of April 2016. Okay, let's try and review exactly what's happened today the scenario, uh, the economic data, the uh, geopolitical, socio economic events that may have influenced the market. And let's see exactly where it's heading, okay? Obviously, given the fact that US markets have closed now, too. Be sure to visit tradesignaler.com before I go commence my analysis. Um, be sure to download the app at the Google Play and App Store. And uh, certainly uh, be keep up to date with the market analysis and mine included. Okay, in terms of uh, the uh, European markets, let's bring up the, um, the actual market data here. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, it's a sea of red. Uh, Dow Jones, the S&P, uh, the Nasdaq, everything certainly trading down. Okay, the FTSE down as well by 1.2%, the DAX, the CAC, and as we all know, the Nikkei was down overnight as well. Okay, so certainly negative. Okay, now let's try and decipher exactly what's happened here. Okay, so summation really, a sum summary is basically weaker economic data out of the EU overall, even though retail sales out of the EU certainly beat expectations. And UK data wasn't exactly that bad, okay? But nevertheless, it was concerned with regards to retail sales, fa sorry, factory orders out of Germany, and obviously the uh, market services PMI, given the fact that, uh, I mean, one could blame the stronger euro to a large, part, large extent. So watch the euro in terms of uh, job owning there, given the fact that the Aussie or the RBA certainly tried overnight. Okay, so US data to... Uh, to the contrary, actually came in more or less um, in line, stroke stronger than expected. Uh, the uh, the market, the jolts, uh, certainly on the ISM, non-manufacturing and the PMI certainly all came in slightly better than expected, although optimism certainly weaker. Uh, we had the global dairy auction as well, that certainly helped the commodity trade. That was certainly stronger than expected as well. Also the, uh, the draw in terms of oil uh, inventories as well, that certainly helps oil as you can see. We've had a bounce of oil. I did show you a chart in my um, uh, mid-afternoon update uh, and of oil, and I did explain that we are looking or expecting a potential bounce in oil. Allow me to bring up oil. You can see here, this is your four-hour chart, previous resistance equals support. This is a, a key area, key congestion area, where you were going to get a potential bounce. And that's exactly what we've witnessed. And you can see that we are in this bearish channel, looking to potentially break out, okay? Looking to potentially break out. Having said that, though, we do need to be aware of the H&S formation that exists, although you are into that previous resistance equals support. So certainly you pop higher, okay? Certainly you move higher, and that obviously will be reflected in the uh, markets themselves as well. Okay, so uh, that really was a summation um, in terms of uh, the uh, the actual market. And let's see how price action has obviously reacted and responded and where we, where we stand with regards to them, okay? Let's start with the daily chart, as always, of the uh, euro stocks. Now, uh, we do need to be aware of the euro stocks that there is a HNS formation target. Let me just save this here. HNS equals the pivot high on the euro stocks. Very important. Is uh, three one two five minus uh, three one. Sorry, three one thirty. Sorry, three one thirty uh, minus. I think it's if I can just recommend correctly correctly as well. It's two nine. Uh, take it down to the neckline. Uh, you are looking at 2970 region, uh, which ends up equal to minus 160. Minus 160 from the uh, 2970 it gives you 2810. Okay, given the fact that we are now currently at the 2880 zone, uh, uh, although we finished at 2890, can we really go ahead and complete that HS? From my perspective, no. The reason why I say no is because of the QE, that's rampant in this market. It's very hard for a bearish pattern to play out, and that's why I've been quite surprised. But nevertheless, you have to respect the pattern, and that pattern certainly exists. From a daily chart perspective, there is an unfilled gap as well, so certainly bear that in mind. Okay, you have an unfilled gap here. Any thrust tie, obviously, you are looking at potential support there. You do have a gap here, though, uh, on the uh, on the uh, euro stocks, and that certainly that level will be key. So 2880 on the euro stocks. So, that certainly is a zone for where you'd be potentially looking to buy from my perspective. Okay, the daily chart. The 60 minute chart, the euro stocks at the moment certainly remains weak. Like again, that gap certainly is coming back into motion. 2880, key area of support. If that fails, then you do have that support at 2820 that needs to close. 
and then there is an unfilled gap at 2750 and then there's another cap below it's very hard like i said given the fact that you've got qe and the qe experiment for that uh, level or that zone to potentially close so again uh, i'll argue to the contrary that there are multiple gaps above that need to close i mean you have a gap here okay so um, go ahead and draw that in you've got a gap here and a gap here so that, that gap certainly needs to be observed okay so that's the zone that we are looking for okay so there you go okay so that's the zone that's the zone that we need to observe okay so again if we come back up to this zone here at 2990 uh, to 3005 that will be gap fill and previous support equals resistance so you are looking for a a potential bearish move obviously you've got a gap fill resistance here as well at 28 uh, 2860 or 2960 should i say so again certainly a resistance okay uh, but i am looking for a put a thrust higher uh, from my perspective provided the euro remains between below the 1.14 level i just bring up the chart of the euro usd today as well uh, if i just bring up a, a daily chart first of all you can see that we are holding that resistance zone uh, the four hour chart, certainly a bear flag scenario. Uh, from my perspective, it's an inside bar looking for a potential thrust lower. So the euro certainly is in, a, in bearish territory from my perspective. It certainly remains weak as well. Uh, 60 minute chart, the euro USD, you have this HS formation. Uh, yes, we have retraced quite substantially. Uh, again, you are looking for this right shoulder to form and looking for a potential break so still remain bearish still remain bearish on the euro and looking for further downside weakness so from my perspective okay so again your resistance zone on the euro uh, like i said if we remain below that 1.14 level uh, the uh, the bears are in control on the euro and uh, the obviously that, that bodes well for the uh, european uh, markets given the fact that a weaker euro generally tends to help the export side of the equation so that certainly will be the main focus from my perspective, okay? Looking at resistance. In terms of the bonds, uh, once we're discussing European indices, the bonds on the daily chart, let's just bring this up. As we all know, a new high in bonds has been created. So that's generally bearish for euro, okay? So you are looking for, given the fact that you have unlimited QE and uh, Mr. Draghi, I think, is on tap this week as well. Uh, you you certainly did well, you did have a HNS formation which certainly has been negated if you, if you look at the pattern here okay you want a classical HNS formation that certainly has been negated and you've gone and made a new high in the buns so a new high in the buns with good volume as well is certainly uh, bearish for the euro from my perspective and that in turn will help European markets to uh, thrust higher okay that's certainly my understanding okay and uh, US markets certainly are positioned bullish regardless uh, which I'll do a separate video with regards to that okay right uh, let's try and understand and decipher okay so uh, especially given the fact that US data obviously was strong so going back to the euro stocks again I do try to make these videos very quick uh, I try my best but it's very hard to get all this information in and for you to understand properly as well okay so moving on to the German DAX now let's uh, look at the leader in Europe uh, leader in Europe is into gap fill support at this 955 zone we 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 already are as low as nine five twenty I think in after hours. So this really is a, a zone that you want to uh, start to uh, contemplate of uh, of looking for a bounce. Okay, from my perspective, again you do have multiple gaps above. So again that gap uh, certainly will come into play here and here. So you are looking for a potential move higher. Okay, on the German DAX uh, sixty minute chart, the German DAX. As you can see, there's a gap fill at 9,500. I think we are comfortably into that zone now and looking for a potential bounce, okay? Again, you, you're aware that there is a unfilled gaps above and uh, any move higher, obviously, will be met with resistance. Uh, certain first resistance zone in the German DAX will be previous resistance equals support at 9,670. So look for a potential thrust higher. Then, obviously, you've got this key or support equals resistance zone in this region here okay so certainly looking for weakness there the 10 minute chart the german dax let's see where it finished or positioned uh, we did have inverted head and shoulders and that obviously failed miserably okay so uh, going into the close given the fear and uncertainty and so on and so forth but you are looking for that potential double bottom to hold which is around the 9550 zone and then you are looking for a potential bounce the first level of resistance obviously will be here at 9620 then obviously you've got some resistance up here then obviously break higher the bulls will be in control okay so 
the French CAC as well once we're here. Okay, so into that gap fill support on the daily chart. 60 minutes on the French CAC again is into that gap level support zone. There is an unfill gap below at 4160 again, so certainly be uh, make make yourself aware of that. 10 minute chart, you um, were attempting to break higher. Uh, obviously, we failed. But from my perspective, you certainly made a base on the CAC, and now you're looking to potentially move higher from my understanding. Okay, so. That's your first level of resistance. Once we close that, then you are looking for cap fill above. Okay, so French CAC again. My bias, as you can see from your stocks, DAX and CAC certainly is bullish. The FTSE 100, the daily chart. Let's just look at the daily chart. Uh, you do have horizontal support in this region at uh, 96070 to 6060 zone. Given the fact that oil has certainly bounced on the uh, oil inventories uh, data, then that obviously bodes well for the FTSE 100. You are looking for a bounce there. 60 minute chart of the FTSE, you can see that we've certainly held that support and we'll built a base here now at 6070, looking for a potential bounce up to the 6150 zone on the FTSE 100. Okay, so that certainly is going to be an important zone. Given the fact that the FTSE certainly has made a base, so 6070, 6060 on the FTSE will be solid, solid support. If we do retest that, then I'll be looking to go long. I am already long from the 6095 region. Just make you aware, and I'm looking for 6120, 6150 above. Okay, the 10 minute chart, the FTSE 100, and the reason why I was long, as you can see here, we have this mini. If I go to a five minute chart, you'll see that we have this mini inverted head and shoulders formation. You can clearly see here, left shoulder here, head consolidated, looking for a potential move. So, no lower lows, uh, looking for a higher low, as we witnessed here, and therefore the bulls certainly were in control, and we thrust it as high as 61010. Or 6110. So again, certainly bullish for my understanding on the uh, FTSE uh, 100. Okay, so any pullback certainly will be a buying opportunity if we uh, obviously do sell off overnight. 6090 is the important zone, so watch out for 6090, and that certainly will be uh, bullish. Again, if you put push lower, then that 6070 will come into support, and the pivot low that was put in today, which was at uh, 6060 is the key support zone on the FTSE 100 as well, okay? Right, now going back to the 10 minute chart, the FTSE, again, you've built a base at this 6090 zone and looking to potentially break out this downward sloping trend line and push higher up to 6130 and uh, the next zone obviously is 6150. So there are two zones we're watching. Okay, so as you can see, the FTSE uh, oil itself certainly is into a potential base, looking to move higher. Copper, as you can see here, looking at basing as well. Uh, looking to move higher so that certainly bodes well for global indices and uh, for risk sentiment in general uh, dairy auction on the kiwi certainly remains bullish so you're looking for the aussie and kiwi to potentially rebound as well uh, overall in general looking for a bullish move now let's just bring up the uh, the european banks let's just see exactly where they stand so daily chart looking at a pullback on the european banks uh, again you do have areas of support so therefore looking for a potential thrust now in the European banking sector and obviously in turn for the European indices. Let's just bring up the uh, European situation. I don't need Deutsche Bank now and get rid of that. Okay, so let's just bring up the European oil and gas sector. Sorry, uh, oil and gas sector looking at the daily chart uh, again. Given the fact that we've bounced in the uh, oil inventories, etc. data, then this will be looking to potentially bounce as well. Let's just bring up the other sectors. Let's have a look. Looks at banks, oil and gas. Okay, looking at, let's look at the mining sector. Fortunately, yeah, you clearly see 60 chart, 60 minute chart, the mining sector is into support and therefore looking to potentially bounce. Okay, so horizontal support on the mining sector and this is a key zone to look into bounce. Okay, so overall, from my understanding, uh, looking for a, a nice bounce in European indices, whether that happens overnight, uh, is a different question altogether. Let's just bring up the Nikkei before I finish, actually, because, because the Nikkei has been quite instrumental in this sell-off. Uh, and given the fact that you've had uh, talk and in, well talk of intervention anyway, uh, with regards to the BOJ being at the 110 zone and with it being in the intervention zone. Now, there is some support here on the uh, the actual Nikkei itself, although you do have the unfilled gap at 15,000. That obviously always remains. But then again, you have a unfilled gap above, so it's a battle between two gaps. Now, if the if the the uh, USD JPY can hold that 110 zone, obviously helped by stronger data today out the US, which obviously was evident, uh, we should potentially see a move. And if we start to see more talk with regards to QE, 
although there is talk about April, uh, the BOJ going ahead with more stimulus, etc., uh, and less of the uh, negative rates talk, then you can see a uh, healthy move in the uh, in the Nikkei. So looking for a nice healthy move in the Nikkei uh, overnight, which obviously should uh, improve uh, sentiment, risk sentiment, and that should obviously push through into the European indices. So again, uh, European indices certainly into oversold territory, looking for a short covering bounce. Uh, uh, be sure to visit cfds.com. Okay, uh, the uh, the uh, website is www.cfds.com, and certainly take advantage of the new account opening offer, which is up to 25%. Terms and conditions apply. Risk on, risk off. Wax on, wax off. Good night now.